This is Big Ideas from the ABC. Now, our special guest today, as we know, is Tenzin Gyatso, known to all of us as His Holiness the 14th Dalai Lama, the spiritual leader of Tibet. Now, I needn't say much more about His Holiness except to point out that he was born in 1935, and at the age of just 15, he had assumed full political authority in Tibet after the invasion by the People's Republic of China. At the age of just 19, His Holiness was in Beijing negotiating peace with the then leaders Mao Zedong, Deng Xiaoping and Chao Enlai. But in 1959, after the Chinese troops cracked down on a Tibetan national uprising, His Holiness was forced into exile in India, where he has lived for the past 54 years. He won the Nobel Peace Prize in 1989. He's received dozens of honorary doctorates and awards. He's the author of, I counted your holiness, 110 books. Is that right? I don't know. (laughs) 110 books, the latest being Beyond Religion, Ethics for a Whole World. And that's the book we're going to discuss this morning. This is the latest. (laughs) Yes, this one here. This is the latest. Yes. yes, this is, I think, 111. So, <laughs> so well done as an author as well, uh, Your Holiness. Uh, later this, uh, this morning, we'll be taking some questions that have been submitted by the members of the audience. Now, before we start, I want to ask, uh, or before we come to your book, Your Holiness, uh, this event was originally scheduled to take place on the campus of the University of Sydney. The university at first declined to have you on the campus, but you did speak at the university. Can I ask you why you think some major institutions might be nervous about having a Nobel Peace Prize winner on the premises? That's obviously, oh, working, 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 oh. Obviously, it's a different problem. Uh, it's very much concerned about the Chinese government. So that's the problem. And is this a... <laughs> <laughs> and so so in, in fact, you see, uh, uh, Chinese government, the hardliner, you see, always consider me as a spiritist. And then, you see, uh, recent years, even, you see, describe me as a demon. So it is quite logical. They must put pressure, those people who are receiving demon. So quite logical <laughs> from their <laughs> viewpoint, isn't it? <laughs> just as I look at your website, uh, Your Holiness, just in the past two years, you have been received by the President of the United States, the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, Kingdom, the Prince of Wales, the Prime Minister of Canada, the Chancellor of Austria, the President of Mexico, and the president of Estonia. Are you on the guest list to meet any Australian political leaders this time? No. And why do you think that is, sir? Well, the organiser, <laughs> organiser, see, uh, not because of the visit camera. Right? Uh, of course, uh, I think my meeting I think one has an important leader, I think first, I think uh, uh, Mr. Bush, the uh, Mr. C- senior Mr. Bush. Hmm? Then I think Jimmy Carter and Clinton and Bush. So almost, you see, they, uh, every sort of uh, 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 president of the United States have opportunity meeting. Then here Australia also, Kasachu will crown Ming Shu Sarani. The former car. Mm. And then John Howard. Oh. Paul uh, Keating. I can't remember the name. John <laughs> Howard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, John Howard, yes. Mm. I remember I think he sort of responded to some media people. He mentioned meeting with Dalai Lama. Uh, uh, I mean, will not bring sky fell down. Because <laughs> this was what? That I remember. <laughs> 
but maybe so then of course the economy reasons i think not only political but economy reasons uh, the china people from the china now gaining much more sort of economic power so uh, since ting shaving open uh, 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 with the outside world and then it's a mutual benefit the chinese people also is get immense benefit uh, since ting shaving sort of uh, So it's the initiative about the lib- liberalization about economy. Uh, now China, I think, uh, even is billionaires now, mm. number of billionaires now develop, uh, and I think uh, living standard, and particularly the coastal area, the living standard, is much much uh, developed. It's good. So I think including Tibet. Tibet also, you see now, uh, because of the a lot of sort of progress about because of a lot of development about the economy in China proper. So Tibet also, you see, uh, get uh, some benefit like that. Uh, in the meantime, many companies, uh, Taiwanese or American and Japanese mm-hmm. and many, you see, they found it's a very good sort of place uh, making money in China. So anyway. You see, uh, they found it's a li- little cheaper, ch- ch- cheap, uh, ch- cheap labor. So that's also, in a way, exploitation. Mm. <laughs> well, But in any way, it's a major benefit. It's good. It is important. Yeah. Well, of course, there's so a lot. So these leaders, I think, a little bit sort of cautious. Uh, if you see, because uh, of the, the certain uh, of irritation with the Chinese government, uh, it may sort of harmful. For their economic relations, that are understandable. Well, let's talk now about Tibet before we get to your book. Now, you left Tibet in 1959, but I'm quite sure that you watch the situation on a daily basis. Mm. What do your what do your uh, your colleagues and friends in Tibet tell you about the situation now each day that's going on in Tibet? Last over 60 years, uh, there. Are Because of the various way, sometimes good, uh, sometimes bad, and sometimes very very serious. Uh, uh, for example, 1954, I went to Peking to participate People's Sort of Congress, uh, and then during that period. I met, uh, I think, all the uh, leaders, all the leaders, and particularly Chairman Mao Zedong, several times I met, and eventually, see, we developed some kind of a very closeness of feeling. I almost feel Chairman Mao like father. He considered me as his son. Uh, we really see, developed a very sort of close sort of feeling. And meantime, I received a sort of lot of, sort of useful I said, advice from him. So when I first see, went to China, Peking, uh, 1954, perhaps I think September, mm. uh, then when I returned 19 May or June 1955, actually, now one example, when I returning uh, on the road, I met the uh, uh, general, the 18th division. Uh, his name, Tang Koha, very nice person, a bit educated. Uh, some leaders, some military leaders, uh, just come from <laughs> patient, <laughs> so not much educated. But he, uh, I think the Kasoda, background sort of background Well, some sort of education there. Uh, so very nice person. So when I mean he, when I coming back, you see he come coming go to Peking. On the road in Kongbu area, I think in Ningji area we met. Uh, and then I told him, last year, when I come through this road, full of fear, uh, suspicion. 
Now I am coming back, same road, full of confidence, hope. Because, you see, I met you see, all the leaders, and also I study uh, communism and socialism. Mm. I very much attracted about socialism and Marxism. Uh, so still, I, as far as socio-economy theory is concerned, I'm Marxist, but not Leninist. Right. <laughs> uh, I think in 1979, uh, then Soviet Union is still there. I had opportunity to visit Soviet Union. Uh, uh, I also what what called the Muslim survey. Mussolini. 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 You see the uh, great leader or tyranny, Samudra, I think, I think tyranny, right? Tyranny. Tyranny. Tyranny, uh, his body, I went there. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Your holiness. Uh, uh, of course, you see, uh, although, you see, they arranged, you see, that sort of uh, visit. Mm. Uh, but but meantime, and, and also, you see, I visited the Kremlin, sort of the office where Lenin worked. So always you see, one uh, uniformed police always to come. Uh, they see some, some kind of little bit of suspicion. Unfortunately, I think, unfortunately, the real sort of, cause of drawback is Marxism with sort of political power. I think in 1917 and 18, not only within uh, Russia, but also from outside the world, you see some kind of negative sort of uh, 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 negative attitude and also just supporting. So, the Marxist regime, uh, I said the initial stage, you see that kind of that kind of circumstance, that kind of situation. So, secrecy and you see tight control, more militant way, at that develop. Unfortunately, then whole Marxist regime, that kind of sort of habit, then become part of their system. That is unfortunate. So I, I, I really feel Mar <coughs> Leninism, Lenin really destroy the real beauty of Marxism. This I feel. So in any way, well, so in any way, <laughs> uh, in any way, at that time, really very hopeful. Yes. Then another thing, early 80, Hui Yanfang there, he came to Lhasa. Uh, you see, his sort of expression is really wonderful. Yes, I'm thinking, uh, Your Holiness, though, in the last couple of years, there have been, as uh, you know, a hundred people who've self-immolated in protest against the Chinese uh, occupation or presence in Tibet. I mean, that's. I'm wondering just how uh, gruesome the reports are on a day-to-day -day basis. Yes, of course, very sad. Now, in fact... Uh, our calculation since uh, 59, no, 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 since 1949 and 50, 51, since then, people uh, who killed and died in uh, Gulag uh, uh, and then uh, starvation till, 50, uh, till 60. I think till around I think mid sixty, our sort of calculation roughly, one point two billions of people billions. killed. One point two million. Right, yes, one point two millions, Tibetan killed, <coughs> died. Uh, then I think more authentic. One Chinese historian, writer. You see, he, uh, one lady. You see, she carried some research. How many people killed since Kazirgo? 50s. Oh, uh, from uh, from 56 up to uh, 62. You see, according to her research, on the basis of military secret document and also, I think, some, some uh, sort of the a document. Uh, he found uh, over 300 Tibetan killed. 
three hundred thousand, three hundred thousand, over three hundred thousand. This is quite reliable. Mm. So, so we suffer a lot. And then whole Tibet area, now kind of the atmosphere is fear. Very difficult. Not only Tibetan area, but within China also. Sometimes when I met some Chinese, you see, many years ago, I think 19, perhaps I think 90, around I think 1990, this period, one group of Chinese, young, uh, young, young Chinese, I met in Delhi. They told me, nowadays, uh, you see, China, nobody can speak what they really feel. Always there remain fear, suspicion. Mm. Uh, so, so that really, you see, uh, uh, I, I think you see, uh, very sad. And now you see the, these points are truly uh, very important in order to build a happy society, happy country. That's no question. Well, let me uh, talk now about your book, uh, Your Holiness, oh. uh, Beyond Religion, because you answer some of the, or you, you pose answers to some of the crises uh, that exist in the world today. Uh, in your book, you write, uh, though religion certainly has the potential to help people lead happy and meaningful lives, it too can be misused and become a source of conflict and division. Do you think that we can blame religion in any way for what's going on right now in, for example, Syria? No, actually, we can't blame religion. Uh, I always say that, like French Revolution, Bolshevik Revolution, there is some kind of a tendency against religion that actually not religion itself, but religious institution. Now, religion, what is the real meaning of religion is compassion, tolerance, self-discipline, forgiveness. Who against that? The very motivation of revolution is a concern about poorer section of the people, exploited people. Karl Marx was sort of the whole his movement, whole his theory, you see, meant for those exploited, uh, or say the worker, worker class people. And the Chinese Revolution also, uh, the, the Bolshevik Revolution also, you see, those czars and uh, his sort of, or say the elite sort of upper class people, they have everything. Now, I think during the First World War, the, a lot of Russians, Russian army, you see, just you see, stand as a sort of, as a something sort of, uh, like what say, uh, the semi some, some kind of object in the enemy. Oh, yeah. so, no, uh, so they, what is it, no concern of uh, life of these individual soldiers. I think immense suffering. So that also causing Lenin. I think that was, at that time, Lenin was in Switzerland. Oh. Then he kept close contact. Then he found, you see, now Russian people really fed up. Oh. So then he took the opportunity, then gradually Bolshevik sort of revolution. So this very motivation is concerned about the well-being of the working class people. That's the majority. That's the needy people. So then, such as a person, how can he against compassion? How can he criticize compassion? So religious institution, then different. Mm. People who use religious institution and also religious name and use for their own different interest. Now Syria, main sort of cause, and also Northern, Northern Ireland and also in di different area where the conflict, where the religious name is involved, actually their personal interest or the group of people, so their own 
persons of power, interest for power, interest for economy. Then manipulate the name of religion. So that's, that's my view. So now here, perhaps, no, I think my answer is too long, I think. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, so no, no. I, th I think what, what you, you need some kind of city. <laughs> Mark, well, if it's too long, then ta. Well, there, ta, are, many, ta. Th there are many questions that, that, that we all want to ask you. Uh, what about, Your Holiness, the situation in, uh, in the region, in Myanmar? Now, you have talked about the attacks uh, led by uh, some people of the Buddhist faith on uh, on Muslims yeah. in uh, in parts of Myanmar. I That's mean, right. is yeah. that a religious conflict, Your Holiness? No, no. What kind of conflict is that? Economy. Hmm. At the local people, Muslim population increase. There is some threat of economy, the Buddhist population, and maybe some political reasons. Uh, That's obvious. Uh, and then also, you see, I heard there is some. Uh, the mon some Hasada, the Burmese monk, their monastery used for shelter of uh, many Muslims. Mm. So uh, we, we can't say, you see, these are due to religion. So therefore, you see, uh, you see sometimes you see people, you see, because f you see, they are really fed up about uh, conflict in the name of religion. So therefore, you see, sometimes the people say, now. Uh, world without religion may be safer. That's totally wrong. I think various different religious tradition really provide us basis of hope and basis of purpose of life. Whether uh, what is it, uh, the theistic religion or non theistic religion. So if now the problem is those people, I often say telling people now. Out of 7 billion, according to some sort of report, say, over 1 billion uh, human beings, uh, they formally say non-believer. That also quite a big number. Then among less than 6, million, 6 billion human who are supposed to be believer, but if we really examine their daily life, I don't think really religious believer. Is that only in the church? Only in uh, even Buddhist in Buddhist temple? Yes, some prayer. The outside temple, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> if there is opportunity to come to see, kill or bully or stealing, lie, telling lie like that. So whether we take religion or not, that is up to individual. Once we take religion then we should be serious and sincere. Then all religions have the same potential to, b to bring sensible human beings. Mm. Yeah. Now this book, Beyond Religion, it's filled with what I might call a, a gentle wisdom. But I sometimes wonder, Your Holiness, if it, it doesn't require a kind of superhuman uh, kindness and patience and generosity to live up to the codes. Because if you look at what's happening in Syria, in Darfur, uh, the communal violence in Nigeria, what occurred in Iraq and Bosnia. Is it still possible to argue, as you do in this book, and this is your quote, that we have an instinctive urge to help the stranger on the street or to ease the sufferings of those people that we see on television? In the light of all that modern uh, tragic history, can we still argue that? Oh. <clears throat> I'm sort of looking basic human nature. Uh, we born from our mother. And next few years, as we grow, we survived by mother's affection. If mother abandoned, even, I think, one week, we die. So our survival, uh, our survival because of other sort of affection, other care, that's basic human nature. So at that time, we received immense sort of affection from our mother and some others. 
So that experience is really absorbed in our blood. So those people who received that kind of experience have potential to show affection, kindness to others. Now problem, when we gr gradually grown up, you see that value not much sort of relevant. Your own sort of hard work, your own education, your own ability, no need others' affection. And then existing modern education system, not talking about these values, just money or this material value. So material, uh, material thing, you see these these things. Of course, you see I I I, I love you see my sort of the, my my watch, mm. <laughs> but well if I kiss <laughs> the watch, no feeling, mm. <laughs> isn't it? No, just use for use. No expectation, uh, respond me affection. Small cat. Mm. Oh, sometimes you see they do that. <laughs> oh, sometimes you see a little bit sort of, you need a little cautious. Otherwise, you see this cat, if you effect, if you effectively sort of treat them, they also have the ability to show affection. Uh, they have no sort of language, but you see they, uh, dogs usually you see licking. And and cat, when you keep it here like that, and cor cor cor, very peaceful. No? I think sometimes I feel, you see, the owner come return home with a little bit sort of the, the, sort of negative face, sad sort of sort of face. No? Sometimes I think these dogs may realize then show you special sort of affection. Clear. <laughs> so, uh, and particularly those social animals, even ants, I don't know if they have affection or not, I don't know, <laughs> but you see those... Uh, not if they sting you, but... <laughs> these, uh, <laughs> those who say uh, social animal, it's just some experts say they have some limited altruism, some kind of concern each other. So then we also social animals. So the very basis of our existence, our happy life, depend on the rest of the community. No question. Uh, big lead, sort of, or say the educated or some, some very, very uh, a marvelous sort of person, no matter how sort of powerful, if that person remains single way, singly, cannot survive. That's the human nature. Then, the emotion level. What is emotion to bring together? That is compassion, love. Emotion, anger, expel. Biologically, this emotion, you see, uh, now for example, biologically, when develop fear, uh, uh, then blood goes to uh, leg ready to run away. When you see anger develop, the blood circulation more in hand, ready to fight. So all these emotions and body sort of structure very much close is linked. So ultimate, ultimate sort of, because of the source of affection is our body because of biological factor. So I am stressing we have biologically mm. this, the potential of affection. We born that way. We receive the immense sort of affection. Now, problem, when we grown up, then, you see, we pay more attention about material value. Material, no, if, so, no, no possibility of affection. So then, ourself feel affection is some unrelated. Only money, only power. So that I feel, if, if may I say so, existing modern education fail to nurture these basic human values, further strengthening. Mm. Uh, the religion do that, but then those 
people who are not much serious about religion and those people who have no interest about religion, there is no way to nurture this sort of the potential thing. So therefore, you see now, the very aim of this is, you see, whether believer or non-believer, you see, we must sort of think more seriously these values. These values is ultimate source of happy life, <coughs> not money, not power. So that we people usually you see, do not know that. Now we must educate them. The potential of happy life is here. Potential of peace of mind is here, not on money, not on power. No matter how sort of sophisticated sort of computer technology cannot produce affection. Only here. Well, I highly recommend the contemplations in this book on gentle wisdom. This event is uh, as much about the audience and the questions that they have submitted. Your Holiness, we've got a lot of questions that yes. have come through the audience, and uh, we're not going to be able to get to them all. But uh, continuing on the theme of religion, Jane asks, how do you think the violent acts of religious fundamentalists can be prevented? Oh, that's... Now, basically, political economy reasons. Not only today's conflict in the name of religion, but even past history. I think mainly economy interest and political power's interest, not religion itself. However, some portion, the conflict of religious, sorry, uh, conflict in the name of religion is the narrow-minded. So they actually the concept of one truth, one religion. So that sometimes causes problem. Uh, so fun, now that that's the fundamentalist. Only no their own religion, no sort of because of the awareness about the value, same value of other tradition. Then philosophical field they see big differences. Then, now for example, those people who believe theistic religion, God, creator, then Buddhism, Jainism, no concept of creator. So, and then, you see, these, feel, these people feel that's the nihilism, right? unreligion, so worthy to destroy. <laughs> Perhaps are the Jains and Buddhists and also one ancient Sangha philosophy, Indian. No, no concept of creator. And in their eyes, the concept of creator is just mental projection. <laughs> well, I'm frankly speaking. So these are, you see, there's big differences in the philosophical field. Then it is important, what is the purpose of this different philosophy? Same purpose, to promote human deep value, compassion. To the, some people, our oh, concept of God is immense sort of, because of the powerful. Oh, we are created by God. So we are creature of God. So real our creator is full of compassion, infinite compassion. We are part of part of that. So we can easily t explain, yes, we have the seed of compassion because we created by God such sort of infinite compassion. And then God's message, love. No God say, you should, you should keep anger. No. Perhaps some Buddhist uh, deities are very wrathful. <laughs> so some people may read, oh, the God is full of anger. Uh, these are lack of, kasota, lack of knowledge about the philosophical sort of explanation. So otherwise, see, every God, people, you see, uh, religious sort of believer, you see, Islam. Oh God, Allah, full of affection. I think 99 sort of name of Allah, all connected with love, compassion. The Muslim, some of my my Muslim friends, you see, they also carry rosary. The number of beat, 99 or something. So uh, the name of God, 99, name of God, each name, some some sort of meaning of compassion. Love. So, a person who believe that kind of creator, 
automatically, you see, convince love is real sort of essence, uh, ka, essence of their faith, and the best way to uh, to offer God is practice of love. Now, now yes, yesterday uh, I visited Kasa the, the Reverend Kasa. Oh, Bill Chris. You see, uh, he really, you see, they uh, practice the God's message. And that actually is, I think, the best way to fulfill God's wish, or very purpose of individual life. So that is a theistic religion, very, very powerful. Then, non theistic religion, law of causality. So, every individual's future depends on yourself. You can't blame on someone else. So, everybody wants a happy life. Happiness depends on your own action. So, you should, you should take right action. <laughs> that also is a very powerful way of approach. All these are the different philosophical views. Actually, strengthening practice or potential of human uh, uh, the compassion, human uh, of the, uh, positive of the good values, real human values. So there, so due to lack of contact, lack of awareness, and then fundamentalist. Then also here, perhaps I think some, some may know, some I think may not know. The point, point is one uh, scientist, one Chilean scientist, Many years ago, one occasion, he uh, he told in our gathering some religious leaders, uh, some sort of a scientist, and some others. So he mentioned his uh, his scientific field is uh, quantum physics. He's quantum physicist. Then he told he should not develop attachment towards his own scientific field. That really, I felt, you see, he really teach me, I am Buddhist, I should not develop attachment towards Buddhism. Because once the attachment develops, the very nature of attachment is biased. Only one, only mine is something good. So therefore, once we develop biased sort of mental attitude, then you can't see the value of other tradition. So we must, we must keep the uh, unbiased sort of attitude. Well, and then through that way, we can see the value of other tradition. Well, that links to the next question, mm. Your Holiness. Melissa asks whether religious schools should be allowed to teach children that one religion is a truth and the other religions are false. She asks whether schools should be able to teach that. Now here, I want to, t to tell you, concept of one truth, one religion, and concept of several truth, several religions. Now, in terms of individual case, this one truth, one religion is very relevant in order to develop firm sort of faith or conviction about one's own religion. Then, in terms of uh, community, then, realistically, whether you like it or not, realistically, there are different religions. I think, according to Christian sort of believer, I think Buddhism also created by God. <laughs> Buddha also creature of God. <laughs> Mahavira, the who uh, who start the Jainism, also creation of God. <laughs> you must accept that. <laughs> I think demon, Satan, I think no power to create these things. I think only God. So therefore, uh, theoretically, you see, you accept all these major sort of religious masters are God's sort of c creation. So there must be some meaning. Is God's sort of mind look not just one area of people? Or sometimes Jewish people, you see, they call chosen people. Sometimes I don't know. 
<laughs> we Tibetan also used to sometimes you see we chosen by our Lugit Shara. So we also used to have some kind of the chosen people, that kind of that kind of concept. Well that I don't know. So so actually, you see the God should know the right of people, right of culture, right of mental disposition. So naturally God have once you see he knows these things, he has the power to create some masters. Uh, accordingly, right? So therefore, even to, so, so therefore, I think realistically, whether Christian likes or not, likes like or not, there are other traditions. We Buddhists, whether we like it or not, there are other traditions. That's the reality. Uh, even you see one one Buddhist like myself, you see, try to convert seven billion human beings. So, so the unrealistic effort. I never make effort to propagate Buddhism. Uh, wherever I give teaching in non-Buddhist country, I always say your own traditional religion is much more important, much more relevant to you. So it is uh, much safer to keep your own faith. Change faith, not easy. I always tell that. So that means I, I have to accept there are different religious traditions. Whether philosophically, you see, the, uh, from Buddhist eye, whether philosophically is right or wrong, uh, it exists. It benefits millions of people. In the past thousand years, over thousand years, nearly two thousand years, in the future also, I think at least a few centuries, that this religion will help humanity. So that's reality. So there's no other choice except the except except the uh, several truth, several religion. That's the reality. So that does not mean you, Kasoda, uh, Kasoda, no longer sort of faith one's own tradition. No. So individual case, one truth, one religion. That concept very relevant in the terms of society. Uh, several truth, several religion, that concept is very relevant, very realistic. C can I just ask Your Holiness, why do you say in the book that you don't think it's a good idea for people uh, to explore religions that aren't part of their traditional uh, culture and education? Because that might come as a, um, a bit of a shock to many Westerners who have embraced Buddhism. Uh, in Australia, an awful lot of uh, those people who identify each uh, every 10 years in the census or the population survey uh, identify as Buddhist, but they're from Western backgrounds. Why don't you think it's a good idea for people to cross over? Oh. Uh, unlike past, uh, unlike past, now today, whole seven billion of human being actually uh, is a same human being. And then uh, much sort of was the opportunity to, 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 to conduct each other. Through that way, no uh, much wider thing. So actually world becomes something like one entity, one entity, one entity. That one world, multi-religious world, multi-cultural world. Uh, basically, it is better keep one's own tradition. Uh, when I was in Mongolia, mm. some Korean missionaries, you see, they are working to conversion. Uh, since generally, I have a very close sort of, uh, friend, uh, sort of uh, friendship with Christian. So one occasion I was in Mongolia, some Christian missionaries, uh, Korean Christian missionaries came to see me. Then I told them, this is Buddhist country. <laughs> <laughs> so not sort of as they, uh, relevant, you see, because of propagate Christianity. And I told them, where's, 
when I give some lecture of Buddhism in non in non Buddhist countries, I always you see Kasoda say it is better to keep their own tradition. Now similarly here Buddhist country it is better to keep their own tradition. I told them <laughs> <laughs> so like that. So therefore, uh, that's a basic thing. Meantime, like Tibet, Tibetan. I think at least over a thousand years, Tibetan uh, become Buddhist community. Uh, uh, I think from childhood, uh, we developed some kind of say, Kasota, faith towards Buddhism. However, among Tibetan, at least last, I think, four or five centuries, some Muslims there. Uh, during fifth Dalai Lama, about 400 years ago, 17th 17, 17 century, you see, the 5th Dalai Lama provided land for construction of mosque in Lhasa, those Muslim, Muslim community. So this sort of in the spirit of to sort of accept different religious tradition, broadly speaking, non-sectarian. And then later, and then also, you see, some Christian missionaries, when they visit Lhasa, the local government, you see, Kasota, but provide every facilities like that. <laughs> so there's Kasota, the Buddhist community, but accept individual sort of Kasota, right. Huh? Individual Kasota, interest or freedom. <laughs> so likewise, in the West, non Buddhist country, now there are, including some scientists. Uh, usually, you see, a little bit, sort of, they remain distance from religions, religious faith. <laughs> Sometimes critical about religious faith. <laughs> but you see, showing interest. Some some scholars say Buddhism is not a religion, but Buddhism is science of mind. It's mm -hmm. quite, I think, some sort of reasons there, some, some basis, is it, that kind of course. So in any way, uh, there are people you see, who traditionally are not Buddhist, but is showing interest about Buddhism. Then I usually see uh, telling them, yes, uh, but should not sort of hurriedly accept Buddhism. Uh, you should examine thoroughly. Uh, once you really convince, uh, since uh, the person no longer any interest about their traditional religion, <laughs> then the find the Buddhist way of tradition, way of, way of approach is more sort of uh, suitable in the, uh, to that person. Then think more. And then if you really believe that is the more suitable, more effective, then it is individual right to follow, to accept Buddhism. But then must keep genuine respect and appreciation of your traditional religion. That's very, very important. Sometimes there is tendency, in order to justify the change religion, the little critical views about the previous religion. That is wrong. Individual case, no longer any effective, that does not mean. Still, you see, the, because of, uh, oh, many people get immense benefit from that. So, sufficient reason to respect. Let's resume some questions from the audience, but also uh, on a theme that occupies a lot of your time while you're here, and that is happiness. Uh, Maddie asks, uh, many people say all they want to be is happy. Uh, is happiness something that you can find, or is, that it, or is it something that you must express? Uh, I think one example, Harabana. Uh, many tourists, including many Chinese tourists. Uh, of course, with those more sort of, sort of sensible. Uh, then, you see, after visit Tibet, you see, they found the Tibetan usually is more smile, more jovial. So that's an indication of a certain degree of peace of mind. And nowadays, in Dharamsala, in my place there, uh, quite dirty, a very small hill station, 
number of foreigners, uh, number of Jewish Israelis, you see, came there. <laughs> so then, you see, facility very poor. Uh, nowadays, a little better. Otherwise, you see, the toilet, open toilet. <laughs> They have to go. I, I think when you come first, I think that maybe you see open toilets, isn't it? <laughs> like that. So, so facility very poor. But then many, many of these people, many of these are tourists. You see, they say, oh, they staying during those because of the, because of the, those days when they stay in Dhamsala, the most happiest of the moment. They also you see taking, uh, taking drugs. <laughs> <laughs> and the villagers there, you see, uh, used to see drugs. So some of these tourists, you see, enjoy the drug. <laughs> so, so usually, I think the Tibetan community, very sort of, how's that? Very jovial, very sort of kind-hearted sort of uh, community. So that indicates whether you see uh, full of knowledge about Buddhism or not. They, since childhood, they, they are sort of familiar, some kind of culture of peace, culture of non-violence, culture of compassion. So, uh, you see, these, these Tibetans, not necessarily rich, not necessarily so without worry, a lot of worry, but comparatively, more peace of mind. Mm. Can I just now, you see, that, that quality, a little bit to degenerate. Otherwise, you see, in, in, ori in the, uh, the initial stage, you see, uh, some American family uh, who helping, you see, arrangement, but uh, the, the United States government is accept 1,000 Tibetan refugee community from India. So when they sort of settled in different places, some uh, sort of, they, uh, how that? Correct. No, no, some sort of uh, uh, the local American you see, set of some, some some kind of committee and to helping or seeking jobs in these people. The one American, very rich, I think, family of the Kasa Pritzker, very very wealthy family. So one uh, one sort of younger sister of that family, uh, you see, a member of that that committee in the Chicago area. Uh, he, she told me the one reason why you see we welcome Tibetan small community in their area is we want to get more peace of mind uh, through Tibetan through Tibetans. So she told me that. So many many sort of Indians uh, as well as uh, American and Europeans they. Uh, in, uh, initially, you see, they really very sort of appreciate Tibetan sort of because of the correct way or trusted. Uh, and recently, you see, one Tibetan old monk, he worked many years in one factory in Switzerland. <laughs> then, uh, now he passed away. You see, uh, Later, you see, they, his sort of company, his sort of the employer, right? employer, give him the lot years in the new sash of the tattoo. Actually, the, the employer actually uh, gave him the gratuity that uh, they collected from the company. Oh, then he refused. Uh, I don't need this money. Add use for other purpose. He asked employer. So these people. See, contented. Of course, they are did this life. It's okay. Then extra money, not necessary. Like that. Very honest. Like that. And then in India, I think now too long. Well, <coughs> we only have room for one more question. Now self-discipline. Uh, <laughs> My is own self-discipline. <laughs> <laughs> but it is on this theme of happiness, and it's from Blake. He says that a recent study has shown that people who lead a life of purpose, that is a life helping other people, working for social justice, I'm assuming, you know, lots of doctors and nurses, people like that. They're not necessarily happy, though. So how can we lead lives of purpose, but also lives of contentment? 
these people grown up a material society not educated these things so it is understandable i said my uh, not only me number of scientists number of sort of what's it thinkers now we really now looking the next generation the through properly sort of educated then i think after 30 years of 40 years i think we may achieve more uh, mentally more healthier more compassionate society family now uh, then leaders or work or employees right, come from that society will be different this moment even leaders who tell lies uh, who carry some sort of kasa da kasa dimin ji kasa dim dim mo kasa Uh, cheating, cheating people. Mm. Oh, we can't blame them. They grow a society where not much concern these things are something seriously. <laughs> the corrupted people we can't blame. Oh, isn't it? So I think education, education is the key factor. While educate about the material values or technology and these things. equally important to emphasize importance of warm heartedness uh, not just through faith but through reasons i think uh, a previous pope who resigned a german pope see his brain very inter- intelligent very very wonderful so he emphasizes faith and reason must go together it is very wise it is very true i think uh, sometimes people believe faith there is no room for reason that's wrong i think faith exists only among humanity no other animal why only human being have this intelligence so faith develop now here you see this is you see the main purpose of my sort of secular ethics mm. uh, is the reason side the secular ethics you see telling the value of compassion the value of forgiveness that is actually serving various different religions who who sort of main message is message of love compassion forgiveness then you see this use reasons uh use human intelligence to create some kind of fertile land right fertile land then different religious tradition you see at that then will be serious religious practitioner clear so sometimes i heard you see the secular ethics uh in in canada also you see some people you see now talking or actually you see working uh, more research work about secular ethics some missionaries no no some sort of uh, christian sort of what's the uh uh city uh, uh, some schools or some sort of college is a little bit of reservation that i think uh, if there is possibility i'm i, I will assure you see promotion of secular ethics is never sort of harming religious belief it's actually the building healthy soil then different religious tradition is because uh, can grow very healthy way not hypocritical way <laughs> otherwise sometimes we i think i myself also see there is danger unless i watch myself you see uh, constantly uh, saying something nice thing doing something different so sometimes if you not serious uh, not sincere about religious religious thing then religion also teach us hip- practice of hypocrisy on throne i pret- i cause i pretended as a something holy person or and and say something nice thing sometimes impossible things <laughs> to say uh, but uh, real life not necessarily carry according that so hypocrisy isn't it uh, i think audience also sometimes in the in, in the church in the temple very sort of a uh, holy person very religious minded very compassionate the outside when you 
when you're shopping or ready to fight. <laughs> <laughs> well, you also say something which was a good advice to me. Don't blame the bus driver when the bus is late. Uh, there's lots of um, uh, there's lots there's lots of wisdom in this book for uh, people of all faiths and no faith. Uh, Your Holiness, thank you very much for your thank time. You. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.